Hey, so welcome back to Gen Z Coders. This is a um, continuation of the project we were working on in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, then click on the link below. Last time we made a simple tic-tac-toe game. However, you may have noticed that even if you win, the game continues and there isn't a winner that's declared. So now we will be making the code that declares a winner and terminates the game as soon as there is a winner. So this um, program is now going to deal with a lot of probabilities. Okay, it may get a bit complicated, but I'll try to make, keep it as simple as possible. So the first thing we want to do is um, add the when green flag clicked code block. Okay, so here's actually where it gets tricky. This is because we now have to deal with multiple probabilities, right? Since there are so many different ways in which a player could win. So now let's go ahead and what I'm going to be doing is I will be renaming the sprites. It, uh, and this is going to be based on their positions. So I'll start from the top left corner and name the top and name that one sprite one. Then we go to the one next to it and name it sprite two and so on. The order that I will be naming it is basically so you start from the top left and then go right. When you're at sprite three, you go back to the leftmost uh, sprite that is the one in the middle row and name it sprite four. The naming is important because it helps us in understanding the order and also makes it easier for us to um, use these sprites while making the code. Also, remember to use the same way of naming it as I am. Use the same method um, if, uh, if, well, this is if you choose to code it just like I am. Because otherwise, um, because otherwise your game may not work the same as mine and it just, it probably won't even work function uh, properly. So I'm going ahead and I'm just naming these sprites the same way. Okay, so now I'm just going to start uh, putting in the probabilities. So um, we're going to start by putting in the operator. So essentially what we will be doing is telling the computer um, that if the costume name of, let's say, sprites 1, 2, and 3 are all X or are all O, then say X or O wins, respectively. So the AND um, is used for saying that sprites 1, 2, and 3. Um, it's a bit tricky, but the code is kind of self-explanatory, so just watch, and once I finish it completely, you'll hopefully understand it better. So this is the first part of the clause that will be going in the AND loop, uh, in the AND operator, sorry. So um, now we say if the costume name of Sprite 1 is equal to, well, the name of the X costume, then whatever. So let's just find that and type it in here. We see that it's button 5B. So we're just going to type it um, in there. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we're just going to be duplicating this uh, entire block because we want the same code, but instead of sprite 1, we want to say sprite 2. And then we do the same for sprite 3. Then we put them together in the AND operator so that it form forms one clause that says sprite 1, 2, and 3 are all equal to the X costume. Um, after this, we make the next probability in the same way. Uh, so once I'm done with this, I'll just show you how to do that. All right, so to do that, we can just, um, yeah, uh, simply just duplicate 
the entire uh, code right over here. Um, and then just change the sprites 1, 2, and 3 to sprites 1, 4, and 7. So in the same way, I'm just going to go ahead and um, do all of the other probabilities myself really quickly. Um, but what I would uh, suggest to you is that if you uh, don't know all of these probabilities, then I have shared a presentation. The link to it is below. So please go and check it out so that you'll know what all the probabilities are um, along with basically how I've named the sprites. It's just um, much easier and it's also, uh, well, it's easier for you to understand. So just go and check it out. The link is below. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this by myself now. Okay, so I've made um, all the probabilities for x, um, and now I'm just going to put um, it all into the if loop. Don't worry if you're unsure of the probabilities, I've, as I've already said, I've listed them in the presentation, um, so you can access them easily. So now I'm just going to be putting the um, if loop, um, and basically because I have so many different probabilities, I kind of want to put the OR operator, right? Now the reason we don't put the AND um, over here is because the AND operator means that all of the given clauses must be true. But in this case, only one of them has to be true for the winner to be X. I put a lot of these OR operators because there are just so many probabilities. So uh, now what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm just going to be fitting the probabilities into the OR operator, right? Um, and you could just go ahead and do it in the same way for all of them, but I'm just going to skip ahead because it's a bit repetitive, right? Right, so what I've done is I've compiled all the probabilities and put it in the if statement. Now, I'm going to put the outcome, right? So if any of these clauses are true, then say that x wins. So I'm just going to be putting the output now. We have the input, so just put the output. Okay, so next, um, after I'm done with this, I'm going to be doing the same thing for the O, right? Be um, so I'm just going to be duplicating the entire thing because the probabilities are essentially the same. And all I'm going to uh, do is I'm just going to change this to say O wins. And then I have to change um, the costume names everywhere in the second if statement from button 5B to ball B because that is its costume name. This is because... This, uh, the second if statement, adheres to the O, while the previous one is for the X. And so the costume names, well, as you can see, they have to change. Um, so I'm just going to do this quickly, and I'm going to change it everywhere. Yeah, so I'm just going to copy-paste it, um, although now I'm just going to skip ahead again, because it's a bit uh, repetitive and time-consuming. Alright, so we're almost done with the game. The last thing we need to do is just add the loops. So the first um, one that we want to add is a forever loop because essentially we want the game to continue until one of these clauses are true. We want the computer to constantly check whether they are true, not just once. Besides this, we want the game to stop as soon as there's a clear winner. And so we put the stop all code over here. Uh, now, um, we can just run it and see how it works. Now, you may have noticed that it immediately stops and does not say X wins. This is because the computer processes the code so fast that it goes through the code really quickly and then just terminates. So, in order for the human eye to see it, we're going to replace say X wins or say O wins with say X wins for two seconds. This provides a time limit. 
So do the、um, same thing over here for the O as well, and、um, then、uh, we're just gonna run it to see how it works. If it works,、um, we'll try it again. Now we can just run it. And、um, see how it works. There we go. So the game works well. So now we're just gonna、uh, name it Tic Tac Toe, and you can go ahead and save it. Thank you for watching.、Um, I hope you watch the next video so we can learn some more. Thank you.